Hey, everybody. How you doing? This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Grand Breakers team. And we're back here tonight for a conversation to support the uh, Sangam 20 conference. This is happening now um, in India. Well, actually, it's a global conference because now it's 2020 and everything is global. Uh, I'm here with one of the speakers, Mia Ehrman from Israel. Mia, welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here and nice to meet you. <laughs> it's it's very nice to meet you uh, for the first time. I, I saw your name on the speaker list and I said, oh, that's somebody I don't know. And that's good <laughs> because I use these um, it, I use these conferences, quite frankly, to meet new people. Um, and, and so uh, we do lots of interviews and these are basically profiles to get to know the developers and the DBAs and the community. And um, so that's why we're here. Um, yeah. I and like I said, I'm a longtime fan of the Groundbreaker community, and I've done uh, lots of videos in the past. So it's good, uh, good. nice to see new faces. Excellent. Yes, yes. I am somewhat, well, somewhat new on the team. I joined the team, <laughs> but, you know, a couple of years ago. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, you, the community, the, you know, the technology you're talking about, things like that. So uh, your session is tomorrow um, the, or the next yeah. day? Okay. So nope, what do tomorrow. You, tomorrow. Okay. So um, what's up with your session? What are you talking about? So tomorrow my session is uh, something I've been a long time passionate about. Uh, the funniest thing is I've been doing almost the same session for almost two decades, right? <laughs> 20 years I've been doing Oracle Forms modernization sessions, right? So first we were trying to modernize people from version, you know, 4.0 to 4.5, then from 4.5 to, you know, 6, 6i, 9.5, 10, 11, uh, 12c, etc. Uh, but this one, uh, what's really exciting about the past few years is really the opening up of cloud opportunities for Oracle Forms developers. So oh. um, this time we're really going to show Oracle Forms developers how they could take their existing investments, their Oracle Forms applications, and deploy them on cloud, on OCI, right? Um, run them through chatbots uh, using Oracle Digital Assistant, um, reface them using Oracle Apex, or Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service. So um, it's really uh, an incredible way of, you know, in one hour I am cramming <laughs> something like 70 slides. <laughs> My designer had a heart attack. Um, 70 slides? Really <laughs> 70 slides. It's going to be like an auctioneer. But uh, I think it's really important for everybody to just get a little bit of a taste of the possible, right? The art of the possible is what they call me at Aura Player. Um, to really be able to see what could happen even with your existing on-premise legacy, the oldest thing you've got, uh, how we're able to, uh, you know, using our solution and partners bring these uh, applications into the cloud generation to join, you know, the Oracle family in the cloud basically. So Oracle Cloud seems to, you know, OCI seems to be really making quite a resurgence recently. And, you know, you just named, a, you know, a bunch of technologies there that are involved with what you're going to be talking about. Um, is, this, is this primarily for DBAs or for users or for developers or some combination of everything? So it's not for DBAs, which is probably why we don't know each other, <laughs> because I'm not a Java developer and I'm not a DBA. Um, in the past, there used to be a whole kind of middle track of, uh, Oracle developers, right? So what happened was um, about 20 years ago when Oracle began building their own e-business suite applications, there were tons of people who used to develop either in Visual Basic, right, of Microsoft, or in Oracle Forms, and tons of people built custom applications, um, whereas today, you know, the big community is Oracle Apex, and most people build their next generation tools in Oracle Apex, and that's primarily focused for the DBAs because it's held in the database, um, there is still a very large community of people developing in Oracle Forms, um, mostly maintaining legacy systems and, you know, add-ons to that or customizations to eBusiness Suite. But they're really at a crossroads, right? They don't know how to move these existing systems into the next generation. Um, most of them may be developing also an Apex for new, newer modules, but, you know, they kind of leave their forms by the wayside. So we really want to try to show uh, these Oracle applications or developers uh, or middle tier developers that there is a way forward to be able to take uh, the backend logic that they've created and really uh, bring that into the next generation tools. Um, so that's hopefully what people will gain out of our session. Um, and that's what we do uh, with our product at, at Aura Player, right? So our product basically 
uh, enables that the bridge <laughs> that gap. Uh, so is is okay. um, is this a complex? So you're talking about modernizing, right? You're bringing your stuff up and up, you know, up so up using modern tools. Is this a complex? Is this a complex migration issue, or is it just relatively straightforward? So that's what's interesting about it. Uh, the concept that I'm going to be talking about in the session, I'm actually giving five options to modernize, right? Anything from just upgrading to the newest version all the way to migrating completely away. Um, but the solution that we focus on at Aura Player is um, a modernization solution that's not migrating, that's basically wrapping the existing system with REST services. So you don't have to change your business logic, do a risky... <laughs> a risky redevelopment project or anything like that, you kind of just wrap it with a REST service and plug a new front end on top, whether that be uh, an Apex application, VBCS, you know, Java application, or even a chatbot. Um, yeah. And it's uh, really very exciting because, you know, we've been doing a um, lot of joint, uh, you know, procedures and customer stories with Oracle uh, surrounding that oh, uh, cool. recently. Uh, yeah, to be able to really um, leverage these existing investments without, you know, uh, if you think today of meet people who run mainframe, right, people in all the banks and whatever else, it was way, you know, people said, ah, let's just leave them in the corner and figure out how to connect to them. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing with Oracle Forms, right? Wow. Um, but Oracle Forms today really has been, uh, Michael Ferrante, who's the product manager, has been doing incredible things. Um, getting new versions, cloud configurations, um, DevOps connectivity, running on OCI. So, um, you know, it's not a maintenance mode product by any means. They really have been upgrading with each version. Um, and with Aura Player's help, you know, they've been extending to chatbots, Visual Builder, and, and you know, other third, third party tools. So it's uh, been an incredible journey to watch the product evolve over two decades. Yeah, two decades is uh, quite an evolution. I mean, and I mean, you must be able to get very detailed since you've been involved with that, with that specific thing for so long. A lot of times, yeah. you know, I talk to developers, and you know, the, I mean, the industry changes so quickly, and people are always embracing new, you know, new things. And sometimes people get a little overwhelmed, um, you know, because it's always new, always new, always new. But if you have some connection to some history, you can. I mean, this is just this is just me speculating. If you have some connection to an older system and you bring the new in, it gives you something to work with, you know, something like some sort of a basis, you know, so you can grow. So everything is not always a hundred percent new. Is that right? So what's well for us? Much, it's all about not throwing away the baby with the bathwater. Well, yeah. I, so you actually that's a, actually that's a better way of saying it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so things are still new. Things are still evolving. Right. There's still always new technologies you have to kind of incorporate right. in your mm -hmm. systems. But that doesn't mean that what you have needs to go away. So right. you know we've been involved in a few migration, or we've seen a few migration projects where people have said, "Oh, we need to get away from forms." And they basically redeveloped their entire application in Java Swing. So Java Swing today is completely deprecated. You cannot, like, you can't even run it. Um, so that was like, you know, if somebody redeveloped six years ago, they would have done it in technologies where today they're kind of deader than forms, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Um, so a lot of times it's kind of a big um, risk to kind to choose a next generation technology when the front end user experience technologies are like a flip switch, right? right. You, just in the past five years, we've had JSP, JSF, Oracle ADF, uh, Apex, um, Angular, React, I mean, Ionic, you could just go on and on. Right. So choosing that next generation technology today that will last you the next five to 10 years, I don't even know if that's possible, right? Because the market right now is in such a kind of volatile place. Right. Um, so then, REST services is, 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 in my opinion, a great way to go because then you only have to deal with the front end, right? The user interface of your application and not, you know, the whole shebang every time right. you want to migrate away. Yeah, these are complex issues in terms of the rate of change and, you know, all these new tools out there. So uh, interesting to totally. hear that. Interesting to hear that evolution. Um, so tell me about Aura Player. You're the CEO, right? This is something that you founded? Yeah. Yeah, 
I founded uh, Aura Player, when was it? 2013 uh, mm -hmm. with Partner, where the truth is we had been doing it as a consulting offering for many years um, in Oracle Forms modernization projects, right? So we had a call center who wanted to run Oracle Forms from their IVR uh, telephony system. We had a company who wanted to run Oracle Forms from PeopleSoft direct to printer for some reports and all of these kind of complex integration projects. And we realized that we could actually automate uh, functionality within the forms as services, SOAP or REST services. And in that manner, we actually, you know, cracked open the black box and allowed any next generation application to uh, run uh, the business logic trapped within the forms themselves. Um, so we've been working hand in hand with Oracle for many years um, you know, or we, through all the different cycles of products we mentioned, right? Uh, <laughs> through Portal, through ADF, through Oracle Mobile Framework. Um, now with Visual Builder, we have uh, several customer stories. Uh, we're on the customer panel. We just had last night for Oracle Digital Assistant Cloud um, because we have EBS plugins as well uh, for Oracle eBusiness Suite. So um, it's been incredible to see, you know, Oracle work side by side with us to help these forms customers move into their next generation tools. And of course our relationship with uh, the Oracle Forms PM um, to really, you know, watch the modernization and evolution of the product itself. Cool. Interesting. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I've always interested to meet entrepreneurs as well, by the way, new friends and entrepreneurs. <laughs> exactly. I was about to say, I definitely work too many hours a day and uh, you were here when I had to shoe three little boys out of my room <laughs> to begin the session. Um, so it's definitely a challenge, uh, entrepreneurship with uh, women in technology ribbon, but yeah. Yeah, you mentioned women in technology. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, you're also an Oracle ACE director. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk a little bit Very about proud. the Oracle ACE uh, program, sort of how did you get involved and a little bit about the community and some of the projects that you're involved there. Um, so I got involved with the Oracle ACE community um, originally through the Oracle user group communities. Mm -hmm. So um, I started looking online and seeing that there was so little, um, you know, presence in my area, right? Oracle application development, uh, where people were not necessarily, you know, there seemed to be a lot of database content and middleware content, but like the application development. Um, so I started, you know, presenting at conferences, writing blog posts, um, and, and doing more in that area. Um, and I was lucky to have a lot of uh, great mentors in the program. Uh, Jennifer Nichols, who I'm sure you know, uh, yep. is incredible. Deborah Lilly as yep. well. Um, and, you know, many others um, who were, you know, very significant in um, mentoring me through the process and helping me learn more and more. Uh, Heli, I, I shouldn't have said one name because now I'm like going through the Rolodex. <laughs> but, uh, but there's definitely been a lot of um, ACE directors, you know, women who have helped through the way. And, uh, and now I do uh, mentorship as well um, of women in technology to try to get them um, to feel more comfortable to present, to be able to uh, start their own blogs and kind of advocate for themselves in, in the workplace more. So um, that's definitely also one of my passions. In fact, I was, um, I won a, an award this year for women in technology oh, cool. uh, for the Oracle Developer Group, which is, again, one of the user groups I'm uh, pretty active in. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really interesting. I do a fair number of conversations with ACEs um, of one of one level or another, and um, they're all they all describe a very interesting community. They all sort of have this bond with other people, and other people have helped them along. I mean, it's just a community, right? So people do, you know, help each other. And um, I know the people who are involved in the program, either in the community or at the company, are, are very much interested in growing. Um, in growing the community, um, is it is it in Israel where you are? Is it um, are there uh, so are there a number of aces there? There actually are. Yeah. There's. It, I was just saying it's it's funny to even think that from such a small country, um, so many ace directors um, have oh, really? come from there. 
Um, but I think it's more of a culture of sharing, right? To be an ACE director is not somebody who just happens to be very bright. Um, and this is something I learned from Kelly Potvin, who's another person who's been an incredible mentor to me. Um, but the whole key is to be able to um, share the information, convey the information, and bring people up with you, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if I'm a, you know, a genius expert, that doesn't really help anyone. Um, but I feel in Israel, it's a very um, sharing culture. Uh, people all kind of help out each other, send each other messages, et cetera. So um, I don't know the exact statistics, but I know I think about five Israeli um, ACE directors, wow. um, which is quite a significant amount uh, for the size of the country. Um, but the truth is, I'm also a, a Canadian <laughs> who lives half the time in America. <laughs> so I don't know which half I'm under uh, <laughs> in the ACE program. But, uh, but yeah, it could be my Canadian sharing spirit as well. <laughs> Well, it's interesting that you're presenting at Sangam, which is you know, primarily the Indian you know, community. And India is obviously a very large country, and we have comparatively small number of ACEs there. Um, and the the potential for growth in India is obviously very, very massive. You know, right. um, and what's cool about India is a lot of young people are getting involved. You're fresh out of school, and you know things like that. And right. um, have you? Have you ever been involved with the India community at all before this? No, this is my no? first time. Uh, okay. And I'm so happy because Sai, who's the head of the community, has reached out to me, I think, like, God bless him, like six years or so running. Yeah. But it used to be like three days after the UK OUG, which is the right. UK Oracle user group. Right. And he did it, which he thought was a great idea because that way people who are already traveling could just hop on the plane to India. But as I said, like a just, mother of three young children, I would come home with like <laughs> divorce papers <laughs> if I left for two weeks. Um, so I never actually got out there, which I would love to. So now at least I get to virtually visit them. Um, and hopefully one day, who knows what the state of the world will look like. I'll yeah. be able to do it. It's it's. I'm really interested to hear your reaction because um, – they they handle the conference really really well virtually, in terms of your interaction as a speaker, but mm. they do an equally good job when you're live there. And of course, it's obviously a different experience when you're live. It's just a, a really really fantastic experience. Uh, very very welcoming people for you know, for, for the community as well as you know as well as uh, speakers. Um, but it I've has seen such, just on social media, it's been amazing. Uh, right. Exactly. The outreach, the amount of people getting excited about it. So I'm, I'm really looking yeah. forward. Yeah. So next year you'll have to go on the OG Yatra tour, which is 15 Ooh. cities, you know, 15 city <laughs> tour. Uh, size Bring crazy. it on. Yeah. Bring it yeah. on. Get my husband to agree and I'm in. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a community. I'm, I'm really, I'm really impressed with them. So, um, Okay. Well, Mia, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure meeting you. I now have a new place to visit someday in the future when we're allowed out of the house. Yes. <laughs> you are always invited. Humus on me. I, okay, good. I now know two people in Israel. And so I can, I can, I can build my personal network, you know, there. From that. So <laughs> you could, good come, luck. I'll introduce you to plenty more to do interviews with, you know, cool, cool. Excellent. And good luck. We with don't your want session. for experts. <laughs> And good luck with your session tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye now. <laughs> bye.